free. Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Hi, thanks for coming um, uh, to the presentation that we're going to do here at the Carriage House, and thank you to the Carriage House for inviting us. Uh, the focus of this presentation is on dealing with your resources, uh, or figuring out how to deal with your resources, if you or someone who is close to you has Alzheimer's. And we're really going to talk about it from the perspective of um, looking at it, if you need nursing home care, if you want to stay at home, or if you want, need something in between, if you need, for example, assisted living. So in the, in the, the people we're going to talk about when we do this presentation uh, are my friends Frank and Mary. Frank and Mary, um, you, well, this is their situation. Frank and Mary uh, have three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. Uh, they live in a nice house. Uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., by the way, Peter lives in uh, New York City. He's a lawyer. He's doing very well. Paul lives in San Diego. He's a computer programmer and nobody ever sees him. And Mary Jr. is the daughter who is kind of like the caregiver around, right? She's like the designated daughter who is always kind of available for stuff. So uh, Frank and Mary's goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. If one of them dies, they want to leave everything to the other one. Once the two of them are dead, they want to divide everything equally among Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. This probably sounds familiar. This is where a lot of my clients are coming from. Um, so this is Frank and Mary's asset and income situation. They own their home. Uh, they own a nice home. It's here in Wayland. And it costs, uh, its present value is about $600,000. That value has been going up over the last few years. Things are a little bit better. Uh, Frank has an IRA worth $150,000. They have an annuity worth seventy-five. dollars They have bank accounts worth seventy-five. dollars their total assets, therefore, are just under a million dollars, $950,000, and most of their value is in their house, but there's no mortgage. So Frank earns uh, Social Security, which is um, $1,500 a month, and he has a small pension, so his total income is $2,000. Excuse me, Frank earns $1,500 in, in, in Social Security, at, right, and his, his pension is five, so he earns about $2,000 a month. Mary earns $1,000 a month, all from Social Security. She gets more than half of Frank's number because she actually worked while she was, when she was younger, so she's getting her own benefit on her own behalf. So the question is, in their situation with those children, if Mary develops Alzheimer's uh, and, or, or has Alzheimer's and starts getting significant dementia symptoms, what do they do? There are really three possibilities. Um, and in the old days, when people thought about the situation, there was really only one possibility. Immediately people started saying, oh my God, she has to go to the nursing home. Um, there were two reasons for that, and I remember that possibility because my mother died in the nursing home in 1991, and I watched that play out. I watched my mother at home with my dad, and my dad trying to take care of her as she was more and more forgetful, and he was getting more and more upset, and she was getting more and more sad. Um, and there were no other options other than home but the nursing home. Um, fine, and there were very few options in terms of programs coming into the home and helping people, like in my dad's and my mom's situation, figure out what to do. Eventually my mom fell, she broke her hip, she went to the hospital, she went to the nursing home where she died several months later. That was not an uncommon story back then, and at that time people really were only starting to hear about the term Alzheimer's disease, and elder lawyers like me kind of didn't exist. Um, so the question is, for Mary right now, what could she do? Well, one of the things, of course, that she could do, and if it was necessary, the nursing home is still an option. But before I talk about that, I just want to go through one piece of information that you kind of need to know, or one kind of definition of terms throughout this presentation. The activities of daily living. What are activities of daily living? Well, you say to yourself, that's everything that I do. That's my activities of daily living, and that's true. But for purposes of the, what we're going to talk about tonight, there are five of these that are very important. Um, they are dressing, eating, toileting, bathing, and transferring. If you need physical assistance with at least two of those activities of daily living, a whole bunch of things happen for, through a whole bunch of different programs, and we're going to talk about those as we go along. 
In addition to that, if you don't need that kind of assistance, but you need constant supervision, otherwise you are, not, you, you are at risk for your own safety, then also you're probably going to have a lot of these programs available to you. So you just want to kind of know about that. So suppose Mary decides, and Frank decides, that really the only option in order for Mary to be safe is a nursing home because she needs assistance with the activities of daily living. Maybe she also needs some nursing care. Maybe she just can't find a place that's safe. Well, in that situation, remember Frank and Mary's asset situation, most people assume that if Mary in that situation goes to a nursing home, the couple is going to be having to spend a lot of their assets on that nursing home before Mary can qualify for Mass Health. Mass Health is the Massachusetts version of the federal Medicaid program. It's the one program that provides significant assistance uh, if you're in a nursing home. So if you think that's true in Frank and Mary's case, you are wrong. So let me just talk about that a little bit. The reason for that is in order for Mary to, if assuming that Mary is medically eligible for, for nursing home care because she needs assistance with two of the activities of daily living, right, uh, and she's in a nursing home, for her to qualify for Mass Health so that Mass Health will pay all of the nursing home bill except for the amount that Mary's Social Security pays. In order for her to qualify, she has to have less than $2,000 in countable assets. Frank, though, can have a lot of assets. Frank can have a house. He can own the house as long as it has an equity of less than $814,000. He can have cash or cash equivalents as long as they have a value of at least of no more than $117,240. Now in this case, as you know, the, he has more than that in assets. That Frank and Mary have more than that in assets. But the other key piece of this is Frank can have unlimited income. As the spouse at home or the so-called community spouse, he can have unlimited income. So what Frank can do if Mary really needs nursing home care is he can have all of the assets transferred to him as long as, because I'm assuming at this point Mary can't sign things, as long as Mary was smart enough in her earlier days to do a power of attorney authorizing Frank or somebody to sign things on her behalf. So he could shift all of the assets to him, including the house, to the extent that his cash or cash equivalent assets were worth more than $117,240. He can buy an annuity. What is an annuity? An annuity is a contract between you and an insurance company, typically with an insurance company. And the contract is that you're going to give them some money. And in return for that, they're going to give you back monthly payments over a term. As long as the purchase of this annuity by Frank is for a term which does not exceed his actuarial life expectancy at the time he applies, the purchase of that annuity in any amount is a legitimate conversion from an asset to an income stream. So all Frank has to do is to buy an annuity that's big enough to cause his remaining cash or cash equivalents to be below $117,240. And the next day, Mary can qualify for Mass Health. Now, there's one other thing, though, that Frank ought to do. And that relates to what would happen otherwise if Frank died the day before or after Mary had qualified for Mass Health. Because with their, in their current estate plan, Remember what we said at the beginning was, their goal was if Frank dies, everything is left to Mary. And if Mary dies, everything is left to Frank. So if Frank dies right now and leaves everything to Mary, that is the house and all of the money, at that point, Mary is way over assets and gets knocked off the Mass Health program and is not eligible until she has spent down all of that money uh, on nursing home care. Once she has done that, once she's below $2,000 in assets, Frank will, or Mary will qualify for Mass Health. But at that point, MassHealth will put a lien on her home to make sure that following her death, it gets reimbursed. MassHealth gets reimbursed for whatever was spent. So the final thing that Frank has to do at this point is change his will. He needs to change his will to say that instead of everything going directly to Mary if he dies, everything will go in trust for Mary's benefit. The trustee can be Peter, Paul, or Mary Jr., or any combination of them or all of them. They can have complete discretion to use this money in any way they see fit to supplement Mary's care. But none of that money and those assets or the house would be counted at that point if Frank died as being countable assets for Mary's purposes so she could still qualify for MassHealth. 
So that's the nursing home story. But of course, that is the story about what everybody considers to be absolutely the worst case, going to the nursing home. Um, two kind of observations, by the way, about this, which are not directly money related, but they're important. If Mary needs to go to the nursing home, the first, the greatest thing that Frank can do for Mary is visit. Now, of course, he was planning on doing that, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, that's why in many cases you, you see, you see uh, nursing homes now which often have assisted living components to them so that people can actually move to the assisted living component so that they can visit their spouse who is down the hall. 